Allie. You want to do a knife review? I think it's time. I think it's time we do a knife review. How about we do the Spider Co. Temperance? Do you want to do the Temperance? Do you like that knife? <laughs> You're funny. Sit. <laughs> Let's get to work. What do you say we do a blade review in the Nut and Fancy project? Hi everybody, Nut and Fancy, CEO of the project, coming at you with a tabletop review, Spyderco Temperance Two fixed blade knife. If you somehow Googled this knife and found this video, and you have no idea who in the heck Nut and Fancy is, it's me, reviewer of blades, guns, tactical gear, other cool right. things as I see it, integrating philosophies of use, uh, concepts of freedom, protecting good people, all those things are part of the project. And tonight we're going to discuss this very cool fixed blade offering from Spyderco, the Temperance 2. Thanks for the introduction, by the way, from Allie the Mountain Dog. She is our mascot in the project. She is currently chilling out behind the tripod. Uh, I'm going to attempt to show her. In a rare moment, going to unclip from the tripod. Yes, in HD. We're going to slowly pan over to Allie, who's chilling out, and very impatiently, I might say, waiting for Nut and Fancy to take her running tonight. Aren't you, dog? Yeah, she is. She's like, are you ready to go yet? Because I'm ready to go. First things first, girlfriend. We got to knock this review out, and we are going to do just that. All right, back to the review. Uh, I try to keep it real with you guys. You know that. Positive, negative, things that I, as I see it. I'm going to knock out a negative on this blade right out of the gate. I have to because it, it just weighs on me. First off, this is an expensive blade around the $200 mark, mark, which for me as a factory produced Spyderco is a little steep. And I think most guys will agree with that. They'll say, you know what? It's too pricey for me. And there's a lot of other blades much cheaper than that that can provide the same capabilities as a Temperance 2. I might roll a few of those on are in as a re excuse me as a review progresses um, but let's discuss a little thing called marketing because it might get to the reason why why Spyderco in my opinion and that's all it is prices blade um, kinda high uh, it's not outrageous but it is on the higher side of things um, in my marketing classes in college you, I learned a lot about uh, the science and art of marketing a lot of it has to do with the perception in the customer the customer's mind of your product and a lot of that has to do with how you price that item if we were to price a Spyderco Temperance 2 at let's say $75 you know and I don't know what their costs are I may address this later in the review we'll cover some other specifics too then maybe in some people's minds it's not as special you know um, that as we price it at I don't know, $175 to $200, suddenly what is a ah, pretty cool knife in some people's minds becomes a very special and collectible blade. Uh, I don't know if collectible is the right word, but special is will pretty much adequately describe what I'm talking about. That happens with lots of other products, not just knives, happens with guns, excuse me, guns and cars, uh, clothing of all sorts and descriptions. If they price it higher, it actually becomes more special in the mind of the consumer. So as we have a knife and we can tell our friends, this thing was $200, suddenly everyone's going, ooh, ah. And in their minds, whether it is connected with reality or not, did you hear that? This is separate from reality, but in their minds, it is worth every penny because it's special, it has an intrinsic value and there's no way the company would price it like that unless it was worth every penny. Maybe that's going on with the Temperance too, that they decided to make it more of an upscale fixed blade knife. And uh, let me address maybe some of their cost issues they're dealing with, with as well. And I'm not an expert on this. You know, I'm not in the Spyderco factory. You know, I'm not knocking around with Sal down there in Colorado. I don't know. I did call Spider Co. up though and I took him to task. I said, hey listen, uh, nothing fancy here. I'm going to do a tabletop on your Temperance 2. 
dudes, what is the deal on the pricing of this blade? And who did I talk to? I had a note of her marketing uh, or sales manager in the office. I don't know if, you know, I talked to the end all authority, but she told me, she's like, well, a couple things. Uh, one, the grinding, the double distal tapering of the blade is expensive to produce. Okay, the Makarta is a little more expensive. The VG10 is a little more expensive. And she went on saying, you know, all those things kind of contribute to the higher cost of the temperance too. Uh, I listened politely and then I kind of thought to myself, well, okay, uh, I don't really buy that for this price point because I see other knives that are made with equally uh, high quality materials that don't arrive to that $200 price point from other manufacturers to include Benchmade. Okay, so the question remains then, is it worth $200? I'm just going to round up. I mean, $175, $200. I'll just say $200 because it's more dramatic that way. Uh, let me get to that answer here later in the review. First off, in order to arrive to that answer, let's talk about the specifics. Um, it is a wonderful blade. First off, it's very aesthetic. It's very cool looking, don't you think? Spyderco Temperance 2, I think it's striking. The brown micarta, linen micarta, actually canvas micarta if I'm not mistaken, handles. Gorgeous. I love them. Big fan. Can you see a downside already on it though? If you guys have watched my reviews in the past, you should be able to detect it. And anybody, no one? You cannot remove them. See how they're pinned to the steel? I would prefer to have them removable. Maybe kind of like the ben Benchmade Nimervis. Here's my Dura-coated one. You guys have seen it in review several times. Hey, they made it so I can remove the G10 slabs on that knife. You know, how come we didn't do it here? I did ask him that, by the way, during that phone call. I was like, why did you guys make it so you can't take them off? Uh, she really didn't have a, a good answer. And again, maybe I should have spoken to a technician. Unfortunately, I just don't have, you know, all day to dedicate to phone calls. So kind of had to take it. Uh, her answer. She didn't really know why. I said, I think it's because you guys wanted it to look uh, smooth and streamlined. You know, maybe if we put a Torx fastener, we have to countersink it into the handle material. You know, does it disturb the lines uh, that Sal was after? Could be. And I think that's why. They wanted it to look nice. Downside, if I dunk it in salt water, like I've said a lot in my other reviews, I can't take the slabs off to service the blade. Um, now, I mentioned that to her, and she goes, that, that's a good point, although at Spyderco, we are big fans of you purchasing the right knife for the right use. And in that POU, she didn't say POU, she should have, but in that POU, uh, our application, she says, we recommend our H1 blades, of course. Well, that's great, but as an all-around, and let's talk about the POU of this knife, I would say probably... An outdoor camp knife may be a smaller wilderness blade. The Spyderco Temperance too, don't you think? Something we might go hiking with, we'll go camping with, maybe do a little fire preparation with. Um, and there's a lot of other knives this size um, in this category that this knife will compete with. But also, can we always predict how we're going to be using our knife? You know, can we say that this will never see salt water even though we don't intend it to? That's my point. You just never know what kind of conditions you'll be using your knives in. So better to have some flexibility, in this case, being able to remove your micarta scales, service a blade, get under there, make sure it doesn't rust away. Okay, but the handle is gorgeous. I love it. It's warm to the touch. I've heard a lot of people say, and, and I'm going to go through this review as fast as I can, but there's a lot to discuss. And there's a lot of things that will I think you guys will find interesting in other blades as well. Maybe some things to think about is all. I find my Carta, if it's not textured aggressively, is actually kind of slick in hand until it gets wet. Once you get this knife wet, uh, my Carta becomes high traction, in my opinion. When it's dry and your hands are dry, I find it a little bit slick. You know, same with kind of polished G10. I will give the same criticism against both, um, both handle materials. My point being is some guys will say my Carta provides high traction. I disagree. Unless it is uh, textured highly, which this is not. It's kind of smooth, not polished, matte finish smooth. Uh, it's adequate, but it's definitely not high traction. So let's not kid ourselves. We could easily, easily rectify that by wrapping the handle with some sort of material. Here's a Cold Steel SRK, which I've done with some camo form and ACU pattern. But 
we probably wouldn't do that with a $200 knife, would we? We ruin the aesthetics by doing that. I couldn't, I would, shouldn't say we wouldn't, but you know, generally most people won't. The looks are cool. Love it. The ergos on the handle are pretty good. Again, my hands are kind of trending towards a large size. They're not huge, um, but a little bit on the large size. I wouldn't mind maybe an extra half inch on it, you know, of handle length. But as it stands, it's adequate, good enough. Um, and the handle corners are rounded sufficiently. I've criticized a couple other blades where they had very sharp transitions right here. This doesn't have any of those issues. And that brings us to, drum roll, the nothing fancy jimping criticisms. <laughs> I always laugh because you guys are always laughing that nothing fancy talks about jimping. I know I do. The reason I do, <laughs> I just laugh because you guys are just funny. Uh, because it's so important. That's how we're going to lock our thumb on that thumb ramp. And in certain uses, maybe you're going to employ this in a defensive use in a thrust attack, you don't want your fingers to ride forward. I find the jimping on this $200 Temperance 2 to be somewhat lacking in sharpness. It's there, a small run of it, but in the, on this particular model, and this is the only one I've examined, it's not very sharp. So I don't really get high traction right there on that very small thumb ramp. You know, take it or leave it, that's just a minor criticism, maybe a big criticism depending on what you're you're thinking finger guard is deep enough, locks in. So when we lock in, we do have some jimping and it's relatively ergonomic. Completing a look at the handle, there's your lanyard hole if you want to attach that, I would recommend it. Uh, and I really actually, here's an aside, I really would have liked to get this knife out and thump on it. But like a lot of items that I'm showing you dudes, I don't own them and they're on loan. And so some of their owners don't really do dig me going out and thumping on them. Some don't care. And actually, I will say uh, most of them don't care. They actually think of it as a badge of honor for me to go out there and abuse it. Um, this particular one wasn't so sure. He's like, ah, yeah, take a look at it, you know. Um, but, you know, I probably don't go batoning with it. And I don't blame them because, you know, a lot of dudes want to collect their knives. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And maybe they turn them, that, you know, they want to sell them later. And if you abuse your knife, obviously it's going to lose value. So decent handle, warm to the touch. Here's a criticism. Nobody's going to say this. You're going to hear it from Nut and Fancy. What's my pointer today? Ah, just because it's handy. Benchmade Vex. Uh, Vex. There you go. Yeah, the review's coming sometime. This is exposed metal. Generally, I am not a fan. I think I said as much when I reviewed, of course, the Benchmade Nimrovis. The reason is a lot of my applications for blades, um, wilderness use, occurs in very cold weather, in snow. That will make this very cold. Uh, you will have to use gloves. Sometimes you won't have gloves though. And that will conduct all the temperature, whether it's hot or cold, right to the hand. Generally, on a fixed blade knife, I much prefer to have a fully wrapped handle. Or not wrapped, but covered. Again, just by way of reference, just because it here, it's here, Cold Steel SRK. Um, and I'll talk about this blade in a bit, but you can see that handle, there's no metal exposed there. That To me, that's just more comfortable. But again, what are we talking about? Aesthetics? You know, are we after aesthetics, which I think in some ways trumped um, how this knife was put together? Could be. How's the blade? Dudes, if you don't already know, you should. I'm a big fan of VG10 steel. Holds an edge, a fine edge at that, easy enough to sharpen. Uh, relatively rust resistant in my experience, and a lot of my experience comes from the Cali 3, uh, not the Cali 3, the Cinta Fonte 3 by Spyderco. Love that. That's a VG10 folding knife, EDC variety. Previously reviewed in the Nun Fancy Project. Love that blade. VG10 steel is awesome. Is it so expensive that to get a slab of this magnitude is going to push the knife to $200? Don't know. I kind of doubt it. Um, not that high, maybe a hundred and a quarter. Again, I think the pricing is just a little bit on the outlandish side for marketing purposes. Great finish on that. Satin finished. The fit and finish throughout on the Temperance 2 is impressive. It's just a gorgeous blade. Very aesthetic once again. You can see the Tang stamp there. VG10, Spider Co. If we reverse the blade, we'll see the Sal Glesser stamp on that side. Very awesome. Love it. And how's the grind on it? Oh, I love the grind, dudes. You know that. It's full flat ground. and I'm a fan. I really am. It cuts, slices better. If I have a choice on a blade, 
usually, not always, I'll prefer a full flat ground blade. And this is wonderfully done. I love the transition right here, the grind line, line. I like how the blade starts very close to the hilt, unlike some others. So you have you maximize the length of your cutting surface. That leaf point blade, uh, or the leaf drop point, is gorgeous and functional. Plenty of belly for all kinds of camp tasks, food preparation, maybe fire preparation as well. Nice sharp tip, not super strong tip. You can see how it kind of comes down there terminates in somewhat of a tapered form and there's that double distal tapering so it tapers from both sides both fore and aft and up and down this way and that's what she was saying that you know creates a lot of cost in grinding uh, does it yeah I'm sure it does but there's a lot of other knives that have similar grinds like that that do not cost two hundred dollars just a just a thought but the blade is awesome it's going to cut well uh, maybe later on I'll get another one and we'll go out and bump it in the woods on my next outing. There's this typical and characteristic spider coat hole. It's nothing uh, more than aesthetics there. Uh, just for the thematic appearance of the spider coat blade. I didn't really talk about the overall balance of the blade. I did discuss the handle. Yes, it's ergonomic. But in hand, the spider coat Temperance 2 feels very nice. Light and quick in hand, comfortable, well balanced. Notice it has a forward tilt on the cutting edge as it kind of tilts forward there. Uh, maybe negating the need for us to tilt our wrist down at some cutting applications as opposed to a completely flat blade. I love that. Very cool. Um, and also this is, you know, the successor to the original Temperance, which I never had, never did examine. That was kind of the same style of blade um, that you're seeing here, but had a plastic handle. And that actually had a lot of fans too, but this is obviously a more upscale version of that. How's the sheath on it? Decent. I love the sheath, except for one thing. Uh, the good thing, first off, is that it is what they call Boltaron. Um, it's kind of a PVC plastic. They use it for uh, other things. I think some guitar inlays use it. Uh, Concealix is kind of the same thing uh, that Cold Steel uses. Okay, I like plastic sheaths. Uh, I dig them. I think they're cool. Tough. Um, and this sheath actually appears to be just like Kydex. Just as stiff, matte finished, high quality. Blade goes in, locks solidly, no rattle at all. Uh, love it. Except for one thing. The G-Clip. That's what Spyderco calls this. And they have superseded their tech locks on their fixed blade folders. I'm, I'm sorry, their fixed blade knives they previously used with this G-Clip. This isn't a bad attachment device. It's strong, it's sturdy, uh, it slips onto your belt. The problem is, as I see it, it does not lock onto your belt and it's a little bit tougher to get off in my experience. By way of contrast, let's bring in the Fred Perrin Spider Co. Sadly, no longer produced. I don't think this was a really popular knife. Don't know why, because it rocks as a defensive uh, fixed blade knife. Outstanding with that deep finger. Uh, guard. I love that. Just a great knife. But look on the back. Miniature tech lock. Not miniature, but they come in two sizes. That's a small tech lock. I much prefer to have this on that knife. Quick attach capability. Usually they come with spacers so you can adapt it to different widths of belt. And it really locks on depending on how thick your belt is, but you can lock it onto your belt. And it does space it out a little bit. I guess maybe that's a disadvantage of the tech lock. But to me, that's a superior uh, belt attachment device to this. Uh, I asked her about that. I was like, well, why don't you guys do tech lock? She's like, well, you know, we're kind of known for our clip knives. We invented it. And so we kind of want to have that same theme running through our fixed blades. And again, I don't know if I buy that. Uh, I think the reason they swapped is probably for cost savings. Um, the tech locks are going to be more expensive than that. I can pretty much guarantee it. Overall, though, I will say the sheath on the Spyderco Temperance 2 is excellent. If you have issues with that J-clip or G-clip, whatever you want to call it, take it off. And I think the holes uh, on the tech lock, the small one, will match up close enough. You could just sub that on. You could buy it. Uh, there's several places that sell those tech locks, by the way. And that would really complete the knife, in my estimation. The weight on the blade. Can't believe I waited this long in the review to talk about it. Is actually excellent. Seven ounces for a four and seven eighths inch fixed blade, which has a very broad, full flat grind to it. That is very reasonable. One reason it is, is because you can't see it, of course, 
but under the handle it's skeletonized. So they remo removed unnecessary metal along the length of the hilt. Good job, Spider Co. Uh, and she, by the way, she did mention, uh, and when I say she, it was actually Kelly Williams at Spider Co. that I talked to, uh, sales manager. She said that that was another reason why it added to the cost. Uh, could be, could be. I can't say it isn't. Um, but it, man, it makes a light, fast in hand blade. Um, again, the PLU on this, primarily a camp knife, maybe a survival knife, small variety. Uh, you could employ it in a defensive role, no doubt. Great penetration capabilities, good slashing capability there in the forward end. However, not so great hacking capabilities in the survival role. That's because it is tapered all the way up front. And so there's not a lot of weight uh, up there at the top. But honestly, dudes, and this is just me, nothing fancy, I wouldn't consider this a hacking blade, really. Uh, you could split some wood with it, you know, making tinder, of course. But is it a knife that I would go batoning through wood hardcore, smacking this somewhat fragile tip with the end of my baton? Nope, I wouldn't do that, especially with a $200 blade. I've got too many other blades I would personally use uh, in that role than I would this knife. Okay, so I didn't get out there and thumping on this particular blade, but I envision it to be a very good wood splitter as long as you take it easy and don't overdo it with it. Uh, as an overall camp knife and food preparation, I think it would excel in all kinds of utility tasks, uh, just outstanding. So, getting on with the question, is it worth $200? Huh, well, how about the competitors? We already saw this knife, the Cold Steel SRK, and I kind of consider, and this, you know, we could roll in a variety of knives against Spyderco Temperance too, couldn't we? And, and some guys say, well, that's kind of a different comparison. I don't think so. This is a mid-size, I can't speak, mid-size stainless steel knife um, that I think would compete against it. And what might be a viable alternative in some people's minds in terms of the first type of cool. In other words, capability. Um, and I think the SRK is an excellent knife. Aus 8 steel, not VG10. Uh, has an added advantage, previously reviewed by the way, I may annotate it. Has the added advantage of being thicker you know, through there, almost, uh, what is it, 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. So it's going to be a good wood splitter, maybe stronger if you have to use it for emergency prying tasks. And that's all I would ever use that for. Uh, try to use something else. But if you don't have anything else, it might be your blade. SRK, great knife by Colt Steel. And it is going to come in at around, what, 65 bucks? A lot less than this knife. So guys looking for a stainless steel blade. And the reason I say stainless steel, because you might be in a high moisture environment. And for a smaller survival or camp knife, you don't want a 100% carbon steel offering just for lower maintenance. Just, uh, you know, just a thought. Another knife, the Fred Perrin, I already showed you that, although out of production. Um, maybe as a small or medium-sized camp knife, it would be a good alternative. Definitely lighter and less expensive than the Temperance too. And we could go on all night showing alternatives. Here's one you probably haven't thought of. And you saw this in Little Shop of Horrors with Fitzen. The Profile by Gerber. This was an $18 knife at Walmart, dudes. There's the package right there. Gerber Profile, four inch blade. Why would I dare compare it against the Spyderco Temperance 2? Because, like the Temperance 2, it is a mid-size, maybe smaller to mid-size, fixed blade in stainless steel that would fill the same role. Maybe a camp, overall, hunting, miniature survival type knife. Granted, this one's been modified, and I will have to tell you, I love the modifications on this. Had it sharpened by Chopper there in the shop. You guys saw that while he did it. Had it uh, back clip sharpened. How do you think that awesome. looks, dude? Do you like it? And then we put that like uh, paracord handle on it. Get rid of that goofy like rubber too. handle. I, mean, I can only be an improvement on that. that. God, that locks in the hand nice. Love that paracord. It's so aggressive and purposeful, both in the forward and reverse grips. Getting excited, getting excited. And I'll tell you, dudes, it's something to say if you're getting excited about an $18 knife. Such is what uh, some custom modification can do for you. It transformed this to pretty much, in my opinion, a garbage blade that I really didn't care about to something I go, hey, this is kind of cool. I like it. You could do the same thing with this, too, by the way. $200 knife, would you want to? I don't know. You know, Who are you? What do you like to do? But I think this would be cool, having paracord on your temperance, too. I don't know, maybe we'll do that later on. I have to find one to mod it out. But $18, how many of these can we buy 
you know, as opposed to the $200 one. See, the reason I roll this in is for applications of value. Don't know. You know, we could go on all night. And again, we have the Aqua Salt Spyderco in H1 Steel. Like she was saying, you know, if you need a stainless knife, stainless knife for saltwater environments, you know, we have some. And this is just one of them, Aqua Salt. Uh, great knife, by the way. Lighter, less expensive. And I think this is a great knife even outside the, the realm of saltwater. I think it's a great overall camp knife. The Aqua Salt. Very lightweight, excellent sheath. I'll do a separate tabletop on it sometime. Much less expensive than the Temperance too. So here we have it. Cool blade, great steel, awesome grind, very good looking, nice micarta handles, exposed steel on the back which transmits heat and temperature, can't remove the slabs. Not a great hacker due to the design of the knife, but a great overall camp knife, slicing knife, no doubt. Is it worth $200? Uh, I don't think so. I just don't. I just think can think of so many other blades. I just showed you a couple, maybe not the profile, but the SRK um, and some others, you know, that I think would perform just as well as a Temperance II uh, for a lot less money. And that brings us to maybe an evaluation of the second type of cool. It depends on who you are and what you term valuable. If you want the specialness of a Temperance II, the good looks of it, and knowing that the, not everybody out there is going to own one because it is more expensive, then this might be your knife. Temperance 2. Review. Nut and Fancy. Signing off. Thanks, dudes, for all the support. More blade reviews coming at you. Out.